All right, we're back. Circling Back Podcast coming to you live from the beautiful Austin, Texas area. My name's Will DeFries. To my right, Dylan Shivery. Hello, Will. Very happy to be here. Um, if you're wondering why I got an intro, I was going to say first intro, but just getting an intro is such an honor. Uh, Dave, for you. Yeah, Dave's not here. He's got a sore throat. He's got, he doesn't feel right, so I'm here. And I feel like it's going to be a really good episode. You made it sound like you're here because Dave is not here. Sometimes I feel that way. Oh, okay. Since okay. He gets he gets like these dope intros all the time. Like you're introducing like the starting lineup, uh, you know, a basketball game or something. And it's like, oh, Dylan's here too. Anyway. I mean, I do it that way because I, I've always done it that way. And at this point, mixing it up just doesn't feel right. Like, okay. It's muscle memory no. for me to say, all right, we're back, circling back podcast coming to you live from Austin, Texas. Uh, my name's Will DeFries. To my left, David Ruff. To be clear, I have no problem with you introing Dave first. I don't think you do. Okay, good. Yeah. Just like the the emphasis you use to introduce Dave compared to sometimes my introductions, eh, you know. Here's the thing. Imagine, it, ima- like, you know, you know during a, uh, a basketball game, National Basketball Association, you're familiar with their work. Yes. Um, they have like really good intros for the starting lineups. You know what I mean? At the That's kind of what I was before going the for, game yeah. started. Before yeah. the game starts, it would be like if a six man was coming on and they were like, "And the six man coming on, we're, Dylan Shivery." Right, but you're you're calling me the sixth man. I'm off the. I'm coming off the bench. No, no, it's that was less, a terrible analogy. No, it's it, so you're you're taking the wrong part of the analogy. What I'm I, trying to say is that's mid game, whereas the other ones are pre game. So the vibes are different. The vibes are different. But still, I'm coming off the bench when Dave is, you know, Dave is, uh, well, he's the, he's the star. He's the starter. You know, he's, I, a, he's averaging like 28 and 12. I get why you're taking it that way because that's probably how I would be taking my analogy as well. <laughs> I think most people would, but, yeah. But that's not what I meant by it. Hey, can we, get, can we get Arch off these scooters around UT campus? What's going on? You see this? Arch Manning. You can't have my man's riding a bird scooter to class. Those things are a, 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 you know, a shredded ACL waiting to happen. Why is he taking a bird scooter to class when uh, Quinn Ewers was taking like a Lambo to class? Uh, the Lambo is Bijan's. I think. I think Quinn actually drives an Aston Martin around. That, that's, that's Which is a true story. Somehow yeah. more ridiculous. I, I don't think he drives it to class. He drove it to the the football game. Swag. And then he got towed during his uh, opening game. Um, the UT campus is famously very large. It's nicknamed the 40 Acres. You heard of this? And walking to class is often um, a, a journey. And so I guess some kids take scooters. But we don't need our, our future on one of these things. You think Peyton would ride a scooter to class? No. 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 He's got to know better, man. No, but those, those older quarterbacks, you know, that's when quarterbacks used to be men. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now these guys are getting on their two-wheeled scooters. These kids are soft. Scanning their apps and these QR codes. Yeah. Gross. Any anywho, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm I don't know what's up. I don't know what's up. You off your shit? I'm lackluster today. I mean smack you around a little bit? No, if there's one thing that usually gets me back into grind mode, it's definitely recording circling back. And so I think it's all gonna be fine. But yeah, your your boy's kind of uh, a little lethargic today. The combination of bing bong and circling back usually peps me up quite a bit. I have slight concerns that whatever Dave's out with, you got it. That like maybe low key, I got it from him. I haven't seen a lot of Dave lately. I I spent Saturday night with him. I I hung out with him all Monday, all Tuesday. His amateur diagnosis is an upper respiratory infection. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we'll see how true that is. Yeah, my my diagnosis of his diagnosis is that like. He's got like low key COVID vibes. Oh shit! Like, isn't upper respiratory? Doesn't that sound like it would be a little COVIDy? Yeah, I don't, I don't really believe in COVID anymore, though. That's okay. Yeah, that's yeah. That's an angle. Sure. If Dave, I don't think Dave has COVID. I think we'd know. I think he would have looked worse yesterday. He says no fever. That's good. That's good. That's yeah, good. No fever. I got a fever. You know what that fever is for? Really? Listener voicemails on Patreon tomorrow. patreoncom slash podcast. As you know, we're doing so much content from beyond the paywall these days. Tuesdays, we're doing exactly five minutes and or touching based and or 
Do You Know It, a game show podcast hosted by Randy Trimbacki. On Thursdays, we do listener voicemails. If you want to leave us one, 888-618-4422. Again, 888-618-4422. And finally, on Fridays, from now until the end of that season, the Love Island boys are congregating on Friday mornings in the office. We're doing three weekly episodes on Patreon right now. It's never been a better time to absolutely feast as a fully optimized patron. Has there ever been a better time to take advantage of our 14-day free trial on Patreon? No. no. And like I'm not we're not just saying that. Like if you are going to try Patreon, there's a really good opportunity to do so. You have a 14 14- day trial, and you have three episodes dropping. We're doing five episodes a week of, of Circling Back. Quite literally never a, a, a better time than, than right now. Also, you get, with that 14-day free trial, you get every episode we've ever released on Patreon. Facts. You can just, you can just binge hardcore. Uh, I'm going to do some frequently asked questions regarding Love Island Fridays. Okay. The first. The first. No. It's not replacing any other episode. Why would we do that? The second frequently asked question. What tier do I need to be subscribed on in order to get these episodes? While I did toss around allowing some people to just do the Tuesday ones, just the Tuesday tier, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. You have to be a fully optimized patron in order to get these Love Island episodes. The reason being is that if we open it up to the Supplemental Tuesday tier, that means that the Supplemental Tuesday people are paying $5 for two episodes. That's not fair to the Opto patrons. It, it, that's just how it is. That 14 day free trial applies to the opto tier, Correct. by the way. Correct. So you can get all of, all of our content for free for 14 days. The final question that we are, we've been getting, and this has probably been the biggest one. What episodes will we be covering on Friday? We are going off the Hulu schedule. We're not going off the UK schedule. What we are going to start doing is we are going to start watching Thursday night's episode or I guess, I'm sorry, we're going to start watching the episode that releases at 2 a.m. our time on Friday morning. We are going to start watching that before we record the episode. Are you aware of this? Uh, no, this is new to me. Okay. This is information I need. The reason we're doing this is because it seems necessary, and a lot of people already want us to do it. Is that Friday episode, is it a regular episode, or is it, it one is. of like the recap ones? It's a regular episode, and it's usually one of the most dramatic episodes of the- Ooh. The, the okay. uh, of the week. So here's how we're going to do that. We're either going to watch it illegally the night before uh, based on the UK stream, which I will send out to you and Dave, or watch it in the office. Y'all can come in and watch it in the office. I usually do Sunday Scaries recording first thing in the morning on Fridays, so I'll probably do that. If you guys want to watch Love Island during that time, I'll be ready. That sounds like a, a winner. You know I'll be ready. So yeah, we will be watching every episode of that week from you know when we last recorded up until Friday. And I'm actually very excited for to, uh, tomorrow's episode because I've not gotten a lot of takes out of Dylan this season. And so I'm saving it for the episode. Quite excited. Anyway, I'm sorry about all those uh, official biz things. It's all right. Sometimes you got to do it, man. Dylan, can I ask you some real quick questions before we get into today's episode? Yeah. Can you can you give me a, a very quick bird's eye uh, review of Utah as a ski destination? I, I would love to. Um, this, that was my first time in Utah. First time, obviously, skiing in Utah. Um, you asked me, is it like Colorado? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's, yeah, like if I if I if if I got on the wrong plane, if I home alone it, home alone toed it, and I got on the wrong plane, what? Uh, you if you landed in Utah, like expecting land in Colorado, you wouldn't know the difference. Yeah, like yeah. what? I, and and I I just went to a ski area. Would I would I not really know? So we flew into Salt Lake City, and we drove to Park City, which is forty minutes. It's like landing in Denver and driving to, I mean, Breckenridge is a little bit farther. It's like landing than, in Denver and driving to Denver, am so I right? Li- <laughs> Actually, yeah. It's a 40-minute drive. It's nothing. Uh, Park City is fantastic. This The skiing, we, the snow, there was so much snow, by the way. Um, Yeah, the only difference is, like, between Colorado and Utah is, like, you can't burn. That's it. Kind of surprised you can't burn. I feel like if you're a western state with mountains, they just got to let you burn. The, the city, Park City, that is, awesome. It's a little ski town, but it has like a main main street, and it's just a strip of bars and restaurants and shops. Kimosabe, Brittany got some swag there. Oh, really? She did. Yeah. Shit. Um, it's it's a it's a fun. It's it's more of a it's more of a fun vibe than it is like um like a mountain uh westerny resort town. Okay. You know. Okay. 
I don't. I, the, the reason I'm, I'm interested is I've never really dabbled in it, Utah. It's more of a scene. Like it's it's a fun place. How's the skiing there? The skiing's really good. Like I said, we got a lot of snow. Uh, we did one day in Park in Park City, one day in Deer Valley. They're like it's like a ten minute drive from each other, so it's super close. Um, I probably preferred the skiing at Deer Valley a little bit more wow. to Park City. Wow. Park so, City on Front Street right now. No borders. That's not the reason why I enjoyed Deer Valley more, but no snow borders there. Allowed. I hate that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. What What's the reason for that? I think elitism. A lot of kids, a lot of ski school kids at Deer Valley. That, something tells me that has something to do with it. I don't like that. I don't either. Because uh, snowboarding has been around for so long that it should not be looked at as like some like alternative way to get down a mountain. One guy in our crew was a boarder. And so he just like didn't come with us. That sucks. I know. That sucks. I know. I also think it's weird because like, I mean, I, as I, I really, part of my, the reason I enjoyed skiing is to be on a chairlift and, and watch things. Yeah. I think it's way more fun to watch six snowboarders than it is to watch six skiers. I don't have a problem with that. That's take. my take. Yeah, it, uh, Park City and, and Deer Valley both. It, it's great. I would highly recommend. Beautiful, fun, good skiing. Uh, oh, and I yes on yesterday's episode I did tell the story. Uh, yesterday's Patreon episode that is. I did tell the story of um, our group got to witness a, a young lady uh, defecate in the street right outside our condo. Okay, right outside our house. Can you tell the story quickly so that I don't have to like relive it again? We get there, we drop our bags, go get a beer at the bar, come back, and then uh, Lara, the uh, our friend whose whose house it is, they she goes, "Oh my gosh, there's a woman about to pee on the street because she had pulled her pants down. She was starting to squat. So of course we all like run to the window to go see what's going on. And she was probably uh, fifty feet from us. And and as soon as I I look up and and try to watch to see what's going on. Uh, she wasn't peeing at all. In fact, she was pooping. Quite a, quite a bit of poop. Um, it was gross, but it was hilarious. And it started, it was a great tone setter for our trip. So we watched that happen. Um, and I, you get, I mean, you got to feel bad for someone's situation I'm not going like to shame that. this woman. I can't do it. I can't, I can't shame her because if you're in that scenario, if you find yourself in a scenario where you have to go do that, like... As, as someone who infamously... Um, shat himself on a road trip and wrote about it uh, i i can only empathize with this young lady because that's a, that's a tough situation she did her business mm -hmm. real quick pulled her pants up head down and just walked off that's what you got to do you can't look up to see who's around you just gotta head down take care of your business and then you're off but it was it was hilarious it was absolutely hilarious anyway park city great town did you get Parks any swag since his name is Parks? I did. I got him a beanie that says Park City, Utah on it. And I gave it to him. He goes, oh, Park City? He's like, like, that's my name. He's like, that. I was like, yeah. That's what I was kind of going for, man. So I'm glad you like it. How's got, the parking there? Got Lil Bay, a uh, little stuffed polar bear. How's they the have polar bears in Park City? Uh-huh. Oh. Did you ask about the parking? Yeah. What, what, where? How are you going to call it Park City if you can't, don't have like the best parking oh, in the yeah. nation? I don't know if that's, that's why they named it that. Word. Yeah. Word. They named Athletic Greens Athletic Greens because the Greens are really athletic. Yeah. You know that? I love that. AG1. I actually brought some to Utah with me. I, yeah, I know. Dude, the whole squad is addicted to this stuff. Those little packs are great travel packs. Oh. Throw, you throw them in your bag, forget about it. Yeah, if only people knew that they could get the travel packs through maybe using our promo code. Our next partner has a product that we literally use every day. We started taking AG1 for so many different reasons. You guys know that we ride for gut health here. Oh, yeah. We do. I'm Absolutely. lethargic today. I always need more energy. Guess what? AG1 does that. Sometimes you don't have time to just take all those different pills and supplements, whatever. But guess what? AG1, it's like all those just in, into one little thing. It's a beautiful thing. What is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all those things. Every single morning, you wake up, take that scoop of Athletic Greens, you toss it in that little thing, put the top on, you shake it, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture. Hey, ya. I, I don't know what you just And then you there. start your day absolutely grinding. <laughs> this stuff is lifestyle friendly. Oh, you got a, your keto, dude? 
You're paleo. You're vegan. I'm not going to judge you, but guess what? You can use this stuff. It's become part of my my morning routine. Every every morning I take this stuff. You just kind of just it, it just feels like you're doing your body such a service. It's like such a good deed. Like you just feel so healthy when you take this stuff. It's amazing. People don't realize that this isn't just like some kind of supplement thing that just kind of makes you feel good. This also helps your better. It helps better your sleep quality. Helps your, your recovery, your mental clarity, your alertness. And guess what? Your subscription, it even comes with a year supply of vitamin D, which is so important to add during these winter months when we don't get as much sunlight. And this costs you less than $3 a day. So you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than a cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all those different supplements yourself, like I said earlier. Just go make it happen. Go give it a shot. They've got over 7,000 five-star reviews. They're recommended by professional athletes and they're trusted by health app experts like Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervais. Just go do it. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Dylan just spoke to those travel packs. They're great. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash circling. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash circling to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Uh, there were some rumors flying around the TL earlier today, or earlier this week. These had to do with somebody that we talk about often on this podcast. Of course, I'm talking about Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo. Well, it looked like he might have been dating a 19-year-old for a little bit. He famously dumps everyone at, what, 25? I think 25 is the number. Well, so 19 means that he could have a nice six-year relationship with this woman. Um, it has since come out, Dylan, that he is not dating Eden Polani. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing this now for the first time as a source close to Leo is saying that they're absolutely not dating. Um, they, they were photographed together at a party on, uh, January 31st. And then every, everything started to really, uh, go a little haywire. Um, when I first saw this news, I thought, oh man, Leo doing Leo things. He's just dating dating these young models, blah, blah, blah. And then, then I started to really let it set in a little bit. And I started thinking, you know what? I don't think Leo should be dating 19-year-olds. There's a 29-year age difference there. That's pretty significant. I feel like they are dating. Like, I know this, his, the source is saying that they're not, but I feel like they kind of are. They seem to be uh, – I mean, okay. They've been photographed together more than once. There's a picture of them on a yacht right here together. Or is that not her? I'm, I'm To be honest, Dylan, I'm trying to figure out if that is her or not. Or maybe it's not. Like I – no, this sounds like he was just with like a lot of different women. I okay. think Leo just puts himself in situations with young women and he's got no clue if they're 25, if they're 19, if they're what. He better be IDing when he goes to the bedroom. That's all I'm saying. Okay, where were they when this um, picture was I taken? I believe the picture of them was taken at a party. Music release party in LA. In LA, yeah. For Ebony Riley's EP. Okay. Uh, what did you think of Ebony Riley's EP? Did you like it? Uh, no. I gave it like four stars. I thought about giving it four and a half, but I think four stars out of five. I, I like her last EP a little bit more. Facts. She, she just really brought it on that one. Facts. I always think that like the early EPs are a little bit better because like you're using the songs that you know are hits, and then the, the subsequent subsequent ones are a little more experimental. EP, of course, stands for. Well, I'm letting you fill fill in the blank here, <laughs> dude. Everyone knows what it is. <laughs> I think everyone... it's ex extended play. It's like a. Do you know Randy? I, this seems like something Randy. I think would know. it's between. I think it's like. It's a short album. It's like it's like a handful of songs, like four or five songs, I think. Right? I have to know now. It means extended play. Okay. EP stands for extended play, meaning that an EP is longer than a single but shorter than an album. There you go. I like EPs. I kind of crushed that. I kind of like EPs. You did. I'm actually surprised yeah. you, you knew what that was. No offense. But if you're – okay, if you're Leo and you know that you have a reputation of dating very young, very attractive women – you can't sit next to a very young, very attractive woman and be photographed with her. He does that at all times, though. He doesn't roll he with just unattractive surrounds himself women. Himself yes. with, okay. So yeah. they're, they're, they're friends that we're supposed to believe that he's friends? I would, I don't think, I don't, I think, I think that people of his age dating 19 year olds, I think it works better to date them than it does to actually like be friends with them. I almost think it's creepier to be friends with them. <laughs> It's like, you, yeah, what are you guys texting about right now? Oh, this new EP we just listened to. Are you of the belief that a, a man and a woman 
can't be okay a single man and a single woman can't be friends with each other if they are also like mutually attracted to each other i don't know where my take falls on this i think that men and women can be friends platonically but I also think that most men and women would not become friends with somebody who they wouldn't see themselves have dated, dating or would have dated at some point in their lives. Like, I think that there is, I think that there is a mold that that friendship fits in. And I think that at a different time in their life, they might've gone on some dates and been friends or whatever, but I think it can work. I've been, I have platonic female friends. I don't have as many these days now that I'm married. I think that's weird. Like, it's weird for me to go out for a drink with somebody that I'm friends with when my wife is at home with my kid. Like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So I think that's kind of fallen off. I think in general, you can be platonic friends. Uh, you, you can. If, if one is attracted to the other, uh, you can still pull it off, but it's difficult. If both, if, if they're mutually attracted, I think it's almost impossible. I think if one person knows the other one's attracted to them, they should not have that friendship exist. I think that's, I think that is doing them an yeah. emotional disservice. It's getting a little male any. It is. It? I was just thinking yeah. that. I almost just said that. Okay. But Leo, I want Leo to date a 23 year old again. I don't want him dating uh, teenagers. I think that gets into a territory uh, yeah. that is sketchy. People started having fun with numbers and they were figuring out like, oh, she actually dealt with like, COVID in high school. Yes. Yeah. She had uh, high school classes canceled. When of Titanic COVID. was released, she was negative seven years old, which is wild to think about. Uh, 29 years is I don't know. Prob I, it's probably too much unless yeah. you're like, you know, 79 and 50. Have you ever had any notable age discrepancies? You don't Dating? have to answer that. Um, I, I've <laughs> dated someone nine years younger than me. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yours is bigger than mine. Nine yours years. is bigger than mine. But I, think I was. I, I had five or six at one point, and I I wasn't. It wasn't a serious relationship. But I was like thirty four at the time. So yeah. she was twenty five when we started dating, which it felt a little weird to me. But I don't think that's a huge a huge deal. No, that's different than if you were uh, twenty nine at the time and she was twenty. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally agree. Changes things. Yeah, the older you get, the less weird it becomes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Leo, if you're listening to this podcast, we know you're a big backer. You're not opto yet, though, which seems weird. Yeah, to me. It, might, it might not surprise you guys to learn that Eden Polani is uh, quite attractive. So um, he certainly has a type. Here, I'm going to her Instagram profile right now. Uh, she had 30,000 followers the last time that I saw her she's on not, here. She's not verified yet. Um, I, I can't. She's not even coming up for me. Um but uh yeah he's got types he's got types he does <sighs> dylan i'm excited for this next segment what's the next segment we talked about this recently we talked about what it feels like to be paying for something out in, out in public <laughs> and they hand you the ipad and you, you're tipping for something that you traditionally have never had to tip for this is actually um a Major topic of discussion the first day we went skiing. We had like lunch. What started it? Um, this, what started it was it was like a, a cafeteria kind of situation. You take a tray, you go get your food to bring it up to someone waiting at a cashier, you pay for it, and then you walk to your table and eat. So you're doing like all the legwork, literally all of it. And you have you had to select a tip option, and the, the base was 10%. Like that's the lowest you could tip was cashiers should be paid a living wage. Yeah, and so that just started this whole bigger discussion about tipping and how tip crazy the world has has gotten. And the well, I guess in, just in the United States mainly. Well, so this goes and this this article from Grub Street they talk about the the ideas around on tipping these days. They note that it used to be tips were fifteen to twenty percent. Now anything less than twenty looks like that you didn't have good service. Someone brought up that in the at the Austin airport. You know how they, they have like the little mini markets there where it's like there's just someone sitting in a chair by the cash register. You go pick out a ball of water and like a wrapped sandwich and yeah. bring it up to them. Mm -hmm. They, on their little, um, you know, point of sale thing, you can't select zero. Like, you, like they have options. You you have to have options like, you know, 10, 15, 20%. There's no like custom zero. Or you can't just like no tip. Well, that's fine, dude. You have like, to tip at least one cent. It's not like it's not like airports traditionally upcharge stuff, so it's it's fine. Unbelievable. I do think that now if I tip something, if I tip fifteen percent on something, I immediately think that I'm being disrespectful. 
I'm like, oh yeah, I'm being an asshole. This how, person. How did the service industry create this like shaming um, phenomenon? Like it's like uh, you're it's right. It's not the service industry. Did you say service industry? Yeah. It's not the service industry. It's the it's the apps that are doing this. They're trying to bring in more money. What 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 are you talking about? Like whatever apps that you're running the credit cards oh, through, like Square, Square and shit like that. Because they're trying to bring in as much money as possible because they're taking a processing fee on every single part. They flip that screen around mm -hmm. to you. Fucking ass. After you buy a, a $7 latte and it's like right in front of their face, you're like, you select how much you're tipping them. And it's like, ah, I feel like a dickhead right now if I do zero. Let's go through some of these. Let's go through some of these and let's say let's see how we feel about doing these tipping things, okay? Because I there is a there's a lot of these and I'll say this right now that I straight up don't agree with. Like I oh. don't and I might be the asshole here. Well, let's first let's start with how the base tip has shifted upward. Like 15 used to be like you kind of base. Now it's 20. 20 I, is like minimum. Being a former waiter, I would never do less than 20. I would always pretty much do exactly 20 just because. Like, I, I, it's it's like second nature for me to calculate a 20% tip. That's what I write down. That's what I do. And so I, it doesn't really affect me in that way. The only way that I would ever tip 15% for somebody is if they did a bad job or if they completely fuck something up. Right. Or if it's something that I don't think you should tip for and I don't have any other way of tipping but less. I, I think 10 years ago... We'll say 10 to 20 years ago, a 20% tip was considered really good. Yeah. Now it's baseline. Yeah. Now it's expected. Okay. So Dylan, I'm going to read this and then I want you to tell me what you would tip here. Okay. Uh, oh no, this, this, that's, that's not going to work. I'd have to, I'd have to rescript this entire thing. Okay. okay. This says at coffee shops, coffee carts, cafes, bodegas, you have to tip at least 20%. Um, okay. If you're ordering a single coffee, that's not much money, right? Like no. if you order, let's say a coffee is six bucks. What if you get, let's no, let's say, let's say you get a coffee. Coffees are like three bucks, aren't they? Well, depends where you go and, what, and what kind of coffee you're getting. I'm okay. So let's say a coffee is $5. Okay. Okay. 20% tip. That's a buck. That, that's not like. That makes sense to me. That that sounds reasonable. That makes sense to me. Yeah. But if I get a coffee and a scone and it's nine dollars, like I I don't think I need to tip. Uh, I mean, two dollars on that. I don't either. I don't, I don't want either. to tip two dollars on that. I think it's a dollar. Well, like the the bigger picture here is that that you didn't that didn't used to be a tipping situation. If you if that okay, like if, twenty years ago there wasn't a tip line at at. You know, a coffee shop. But I don't hate tipping if some if they're making the coffee drink. That makes sense to me. That I don't hate it either. I don't hate it either. I, I I'm fine tipping. I'm a not buck tipping on a, on a scone. No. You didn't do shit. You handed. If it to every me. single person in this line of people is getting tipped on a scone, you're making like hundred twenty dollars an hour. That's pretty good work. If but twenty percent for coffee is the same expectation as a waiter or waitress who's grinding, who serves you for an entire like hour long meal, bringing you refilling your water, bringing your food and giving you recommendations. That shouldn't be the same percentage to me. This says that if you only order coffee, the minimum tip is just a dollar, just a dollar. And I think that's fair. I'm, I'm okay with doing a dollar. I don't necessarily want to do a dollar. If it's a drip coffee where you're just doing it on a thing and then you turn it around and hand it to me, like just know I'm going to give you a dollar because I'm not a jerk, but you don't deserve that dollar. Yeah. You the, should be getting a living wage from your from your person. You should be mad at your boss, not me. This coffee trailer across the street from us, which makes really good coffee, but that's not the point. They just upped their prices. They were already expensive. It's so expensive now. Yeah. Like I, I yeah. go over there. If I get a coffee and two breakfast tacos, I'm in for 20 bucks. How much are you tipping for food delivery? Do you do food delivery very often? Uh, we, we, we probably do it. Uh, once every week or two weeks, yeah. We do it. We did it last night, actually. We do it once a quarter. That might even be overstating how often we do food delivery. Um, how much would you say you have to tip on that? Honestly, the the those apps they like they give you like a tip recommendation. I usually just go with whatever that is. I don't even know. I don't really know the percentage on it. This is an area where I'm willing to tip a lot more. I agree, Randy. I, I don't have a problem with that. Can you give us? Can you as as a former Jimmy John's guy? Can you give us a breakdown from someone who was on ground, like just on the ground level, of what someone should tip somebody doing food delivery? I would say twenty percent is minimum for that. Some people would do less, and definitely like with 
sandwiches there's like oh if i just put one dollar even though it's like a six dollar like six sandwich order so some people just didn't really understand but i think 20 percent is minimum for i totally agree with that i agree if not maybe more honestly because think about what someone bringing you a sandwich is like the convenience level the convenience factor is off the charts Correct. you sit on your ass at the Correct. office or at home they do everything for you they deserve a good tip agree if you're handing me a fucking coffee I'm sorry, but you don't deserve the same level, the same percentage of tip. I know that it's it's like five bucks compared to, you know, a, a ten dollar stamp. I guess that's still pretty cheap too. I guess maybe you order for more people, but that is much more deserving of a decent tip than someone handing me food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This says for food delivery, tip a minimum of five dollars or twenty percent, whichever is greater. Five isn't enough. No, but that's but this is for something. If this was small, if this was a small thing. Just from being delivery at all, five dollars. It says whichever is greater. Okay, I don't agree with that. Okay, well, listen. Six dollar Jimmy John sandwich. I'm getting a five dollar tip. That was like, whoa, this person's really nice. Like we're as a delivery driver, I was never expecting a five dollar tip. On okay, one but the work that you put into delivering one sandwich is the same as if you brought ten sandwiches. If I got a six dollar Jimmy John sandwich and it was getting delivered to me, I'm five dollars so is fast baseline. that I might freak. Right. Uh, I, I'm. I don't think that tipping five dollars on top of that is that egregious. It's not. It's not. Their, I don't think it's crazy. It's not their fault that your order is small. Hey, Randy. Here's a question for you. Do people ever do zero percent or not tip and then give you a cash tip? And if so, would that be something that you would prefer or not prefer? See that that's a very like old person thing to do because it's like, yeah, hey, don't put this on your taxes. But in reality, like all of our stuff was getting cashed and it was all going through anyways. So. Didn't really matter. It, it, in the end, okay. actually, I'll say that I preferred it being on the little receipts because then having to carry all that cash and then maybe having change for people with cash was a way more stressful than just having someone write on the or pre-tipping beforehand. Okay. Pre-tipping beforehand was the best because you just drop off the food and not worry about it. You have to sit there awkwardly while someone fills out the thing right in front of you. That was the original. Terrible. Was there. Like, no one wanted to see that. What are you going to write on it? Yeah, I hated that. I used to get uh, food delivered at Grand X and I would be sitting in my cubicle. They'd walk up and you'd sign the receipt yeah. right there. And it was like, man, I don't want to do this right now. Here's the next one. Picking up takeout it says you must tip at least 10%. Here's the thing. I got bad news and I might step on a soapbox right now. Picking up takeout food. I'm sorry. I... You're not doing much. When I opt for picking up takeout as opposed to having delivered, I'm doing it to save money. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so, <laughs> like, I'm taking all the legwork out of it to make your job easier and my job harder. I've gotten to the point, too, where I have my pickup places, like my takeout places that I go to to pick up, and I gravitate towards the places where I don't even have to talk to somebody. It's on a, it's on a shelf, and I can go up, and I can grab the one that says Will D on it. I'm like I'm like two or three bucks on this. Dude, I don't... I, I said because it before. If, I said it before, and I got some... I got a little bit of blowback, but as a... Like, what, if I used to be someone who would answer a phone at the restaurant, take down the order, hand it off to whoever, and then they'd come and pick it up. I never expected anything from that. If anything, I was like, why the fuck am I the person answering the phone dealing with this? Like, I should be taking care of the people that are physically in the restaurant. That is my job. My no job is, is not to do takeout food. No one is serving you. No, I, one's, no one's filling your drink for you and, and all that. It's like you're doing all the, the, the legwork. I mean, tip them, a, tip them a few bucks if you want. Like, yeah. that's fun. Like, if you appreciate what, you know, what they're, yeah, they're making your food. Yeah, I'm not going to stiff them. Yeah, don't stiff them, but... We don't need to do 10% on a like a you know a $50 pickup. And that well, that's not very much money, I guess. Five bucks isn't a whole lot. Yeah, five bucks is fine. But definitely don't do more than like I don't just, do like 20%. I don't know. The the takeout thing or the, when picking up takeout, that is the one place where it's the most gray for me, where I'm not really sure what to do because I feel like I'm making your life way easier. And it's honestly more work for the chef than anybody else in the restaurant. They're having to make extra meals for people that aren't in the restaurant. I don't know. And I also think that it, Maybe I should just go. Maybe instead of calling in takeout, maybe it's just doing it on the tap. Maybe I just go in, have a beer, and uh, just give him money on top of that. That's the, this is one that I don't like. Yeah, I, I, there's something weird about it that I haven't really figured out yet. This is probably the one where most people like the biggest, you know, difference in in how people perceive it or like. I think a bar. I think the next one is at a bar. Conventional wisdom stands tipped at least one dollar per drink. 
if you're just getting a beer and 20% for a cocktail. This is one I agree with. If I'm at a bar and I order a cocktail at a bar, that's not a craft cocktail. If I'm at like a normal bar, not a nice bar, not a nice sit down cocktail lounge, whatever. I'm sorry. I'm still probably just doing $1 for my uh, tequila soda that you yeah. just gassed into my thing. Cocktails ha have gone crazy. Yeah. Now that cocktails in Austin are like anywhere between 15 and $18. Yeah. Uh, Tipping 20% based on the work that goes into it, I'm willing to do that and not really worry about it. Yeah. Especially because if their work directly affects the flavor of my drink, they deserve they deserve to do a good if they do a good job, they deserve to reap yeah. the benefits of that. Yeah. But if yeah, if you're if you get, you know, a bottle of beer and they twist a cap off hand it to you, that's a buck every time. A buck per beer. In my opinion. So this says if you're at a food counter. A cheese shop, a deli counter, a fast casual lunch spot where employees are telling you about the items, slicing or mixing your grain bowl, you must tip something if prompted, ideally 10%. At Brooklyn Larder, for instance, the tip pool is divided among the employees who are paid hourly, which means that instead of making a minimum wage, $16 an hour, they now take home around $21 an hour. I I don't have enough experience at places like this to actually say what what this would be for me. If you go to Chipotle, does this count? Because they're making your food bowl. That's, yeah, that, that's an example. Our local of... Chipotle doesn't even have a place to tip other than a tip jar out. When I pay for my meal, there's no place for me to actually do that, which is why I There's not like, a tip line on the receipt? I don't sign or... a receipt. It's all contactless there. Oh. So I don't really, I have no take here. It sounds to me like if somebody's actually making your food, like ideally 10% seems lower than all these other ones. You're telling me the person making my food in front of me deserves the same amount as the person who hands me my food at takeout? That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I, I think the people who make the food probably get paid more. Maybe. At Chipotle, that's probably not so, though. Yeah, I don't know. Because it's, it's all gray, man. This says Uber drivers 20% at least. Uh, I think... This also says that uh, Uber takes more than 25% cut of fares. Uh, Uber drivers earn substantially less in fares and tips than taxi drivers. If I have a really good Uber driver, I'm very likely to give them a good tip. Here's the thing about Uber and Lyft. The way the app is set up is not doing their drivers like any favors at all. I will get in a car. I will get in a, an Uber. Yeah. They'll, t they'll take me to my destination. I'll get out. I'll close the app. And then like three days later, I'll need an Uber again. I'll pull up the app. And it's like, would you like to tip this person that you used three days ago? I'm like, I don't even remember that fucking car ride. Yeah. So like, yeah. I, I'm like, here's a buck or something. But like, and that's probably not fair. I that, honestly, might, that might be a me problem. I honestly wish they would send me a po uh, like a push notification 10 minutes after my drive and say yes. like, hey, do you want to leave him a tip? And I'd be like, yeah, let's ride. Or like when you're a mile from your destination. it, it there, there you and go. And it's like, hey, if your driver's doing a good job, here's the option to tip. I'll be much more inclined to leave a decent Great tip call. then. Great call. They need to fix that. If, if you were for Uber, we'll take our consulting fee. Yeah. That's got to happen. These, they're losing money by uh, the way the app is set up. Randy looks confused here. What's your problem with this? I, I just don't because then the driver get a notification that you just tipped them and like a mile away and like what if they didn't like your tip? It would be a weird situation. Well, I then like maybe the, right I like afterwards. That. I like the right afterwards. Yeah, that, more that's than fine too. Thing. But like if if I if I sometimes it's like a month between my rides, right? Yeah, I'll pull up the app. I don't do like, nearly like, as much as I used to. Would you like to tip uh, Daryl? Uh, who you took to, like, I was drunk when I, I don't fucking remember that ride. Like, probably not. Was it a good ride? But if it was right after, I'd be like, yeah, Daryl was great. Yeah. Here's five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I also think an Uber, an, my tip might fluctuate a lot with an Uber driver. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. You, like, tipping somebody who uh, is making my food is much different than tipping somebody who has my life in their hands in their you car. Want good, if if they a, do a great job, I might I might hit that 30% that button on if you. If you want a good Uber tip from me, it's got to be comfortable temperature, don't talk to me, and get me there quickly. I'll give you all the all the all the money. Also, don't don't run uh, like every single yellow. It it kind of scares me. It, it's oh, fine I, when I do it. I prefer that. It, it's fine when I do it, but when an Uber driver does it, I'm like, oh god, maybe we could uh, pump the brakes there. Getting the car with a slow a slow driver just really irritates me. If you're a business out there and your employees get tips, just make sure you're paying them a living wage and uh, they don't have to absolutely rely on the kindness of uh, of people, especially going into what might be a recession. 
just 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 try to do what you can do. The last thing I'll add to this, if it's someone that you see regularly, yeah. your local bartender Gas that, the you, fuck that up. you know really well, your hairstylist, get that tip off. This said this said, and I think I missed this one, that uh for your the person cutting your hair, you need to do at least twenty percent. At least. And when it's the end of the year around the holidays, you gotta toss them a absolute bone. That's what I do with tea. Yep. I hope you, I, out. I, I'm scared that you give her more than I give you, or than I give her. How much do you do? I don't remember how much I did for my end of the year. Oh, for the end of the year? Yeah, yeah. No, I've I've since upped my tip game with our uh, hair hair person because uh, I knew Dylan did. I thought I was already doing a good job. Then I heard what Dylan was doing. I was like, all right, well, yeah. I guess my hair cost uh, or just went up a little bit. That's why my hair looks so dope all the time. I mean, I th I also think there's another reason your hair might look so dope all the time, Dylan. It's called neutrophil. Oh, that's true. Wow. This you guy. just you just lobbed that up for me. That I know we had another segment we were gonna do before that, but like you can't just lob that up to me and nah, not let me knock it I out. I accidentally the park. threw you up a perfect alley oop. Yep. When I got Neutrophil in the mail for the first time, my wife was so impressed. Not only because it was a product she had heard a lot about, but just she was happy that I was being proactive about the potential of, you know, me possibly just not having all the hair I've always had in my life. Yeah. You know, I have a decent head of hair, but that means that it means more to me than some other people. I want to hold on to this while I still have it. And turning 36, not the ideal age to be turning if you're wanting your hair health to be at peak. Nutrafol has given me uh, some some confidence in my hair game. I was noticing some thinning. I absolutely was. Uh, taking Nutrafol, I feel it just feels different when I run my hand through my hair, and it's giving me some more confidence. Bay has noticed it too. She loves it. We use Nutrafol. You should too. You don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health. There's a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness. Go ahead and get rid of your thinning hair. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Their hair growth nutraceuticals go beyond genetics and multi-target the root causes of hair thinning, including stress, hormones, nutrition, metabolism, aging, and lifestyle through whole body health. Physician formulated using natural medical grade ingredients, Nutrafol's drug free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual help, health. And in a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. It's just linking and building with your hair follicles. Yeah. That's right. They're trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors. So just go make it happen. You too can grow thicker, healthier hair. And support our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash men and entering promo code CIRCLING to save $15 on your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time, plus free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men, promo code CIRCLING. Dylan, your house has had some dog in it lately. <laughs> yeah, we have a new family member. Uh, yeah, the circumstances around this are, are actually pretty sad. Um, but yeah, we have a new dog in the house and like an actual dog, not like I got that dog in me, oh. but an actual dog. So Brittany's, uh, Brittany's my wife, if those who don't know, her stepdad is, uh, sick and I don't want to like get into the details of his sickness, but, um, it, it's, it's bad. It's bad to the point to where he is no longer unable to take care of his dog. And the dog is now our dog because we are, you know, we're, she's very close with her stepdad and we obviously we we're dog people. And so our home is the best place for this dog. This dog is an Australian Kelpie. I thought it was a mutt, which I don't know if that's offensive or not, but uh, yeah, I thought it was a mutt. It turns out it's an Australian Kelpie, which is a breed I was unfamiliar with. Oh, I have, I have one. I've never heard of this dog yeah. and two i've never really seen this i mean dylan i if i saw this dog on the street i would think it was a mutt i'd be like this is a mix between yeah. it's got mutt vibes yeah but it's got mutt vibes yeah. for sure cute dogs though it's a cute dog um the thing about this dog is that he's geriatric he is at least 15 years old it's old for a dog so when when this dog was born i was just turning 21 this dog was born in um in uh, 2007. Okay. This, this dog is this almost dog old enough to date turned Leo. turned 16 this year. My, my already, they don't know the actual birth date. That's why I said at least 15. We'll be turning 16 this year. I think we should give it a birthday. 
Okay. Why don't we give it a birthday? This dog, no, like, no offense to this dog, but this dog's years are limited. He's I, about. I think we should give it a birthday so we can have a party for it. I'm guessing he's about 35 pounds. He's kind of frail. We got a name on this thing? <laughs> this is funny. Um, is his name Dylan? No. So, you know, the, uh, so I, I used to write under a, a pseudonym at, at uh, Grand X. And it yeah. was Roger Dorn. Uh -huh. There was like a, a parody account. Remember that? Remember the parody account? Ruger Dern? This dog's name is Ruger. Oh, hell yes. Yeah. This hell dog's yes. name is Ruger, which I think is a pretty cool name for a dog. Like I said, this dog is geriatric. Um, he's very old. He's completely deaf. What are, have you asked Ruger what uh, what the keys are to living such a long life as a dog? I did, but since he's completely deaf, he didn't understand what I was saying. Because uh, He can't lip read either? This dog, like, I'm not trying to be insensitive here because it's an old dog and... And, and look, this dog deserves, you know, its final chapter to be in a warm, comfortable, safe household. And that's what we're going to give him. All right. That's our plan. We're going to take care of this dog until he passes. Is there a butt coming? He's so gross. <laughs> this dog is just so gross. He makes weird sounds. Like he's constantly licking his paw and like the sound that his mouth makes is just really gross. He, he farts like... Brittany texted me yesterday. We were recording, actually. She said, Ruger just farted and it's lethal. Um, he pees every... He's, he's the Dave of dogs. He pees <laughs> every five minutes. And, like, if you take him outside, he knows how to do his business. He knows, like, he, he pees in grass. But if he's inside and needs to go, he's just going to fucking go. He's like, I'm old. I don't care. I don't want to make it to the door. That's what old people do, dude. And I'm just going to go right here. That's what this they do. This morning, I'm getting the kids ready for school. I'm, I do a... a Bagel in the toaster for parks. He's eating. He goes, oh, my gosh, Ruger just pooped. I turn around, two big old turds on the floor right behind me. Um, this dog is is just a lot. We were playing cards yesterday. I was playing cards with the kids. I like to play uh, Uno. We were playing Uno. Had the cards laid out on the coffee table. He comes up and just grabs the cards with his mouth and just starts to run off with them. Like This dog, look, a sweet dog. He's making he's making our lives very difficult. He peed on the rug we got for Christmas. Brand new rug. It's in our kitchen. He peed all over it. Our kitchen smells like dog pee. Um, he smells himself. Dylan, I don't offer this to many people. I don't do it. I've only offered it to one other couple in my entire life, Micah and Caitlin, or Boo Boo. Boo Boo. Boo Boo. Uh, we have we have a a carpet cleaner that does the does the job when it comes to okay. uh, dog accidents. So that's, that's, Rosie was having some incontinence issues a few years ago. We we knew we had to buy this. She has since solved those issues, and uh, this thing is phenomenal. The water that comes out of it after you've cleaned everything is one of the more disgusting looking things you've ever seen in your life. This dog, like he he poops like like twenty times a day, but they're like they're like little turds. He just like oh, I'm, I'm in the yard. I'll just I might as well just poop. Yeah, somebody so he'll, got to he'll, get a so little turd off. He'll just poop. Oh, and when he poops, every time he does, he gets these outrageous boners. You know how you know male dogs like they'll they'll get the the red rocket when they poop. Sometimes no, you seen that? No, it happens. Um, this dog, every time he poops, it's like and it's massive and it's gross. The dog is just gross. I can't wait to meet this we, dog. We we love the dog. How is it with other dogs? If I bring Rosie over, can 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 she play pretty Fine. seamlessly? Fine, like. Stella's there, and Stella was like, oh, I got a new dog in the house. I want to play with this dog. She quickly learned that he's kind of unable to play because he's so old and doesn't get around very well. But Ruger's just like, oh, fuck you, dog. I don't care. I'm just going to do my thing. He he farts, and he licks himself, and he climbs on our couch, and he pisses everywhere, and he's a pain in our ass, but we're still, like, committed to giving him, you know, like I said, like a a warm final chapter. I don't know how much long, longer this dog has left. But um, he's in a he's in a dude. Good we're place. gonna give this dog. We're gonna give this dog the best end of life it's ever uh, seen. He's so frail. Don't bring this dog in the in the office. He, oh, I won't. He's yeah, we so, can't have we can't have doo doo and pee pee. He's frail. Like he can't climb the stairs. He's deaf. He, I, I think his his eyesight might also be going a bit. So when I was younger, we had a we had a a couple that was friends with my parents, and they were moving, and they couldn't take their dog, and so we had a, we had a Yorkshire Terrier, and this dog was also a Yorkshire Terrier. So we're like, yeah, let's take this dog. And what we later found out was that this dog definitely had something wrong. This brain was definitely not all there, like you just said. Couldn't climb the stairs, pissed on the, uh, on the, on the ground every single day, pooped everywhere. We had no idea what was going on. And finally, my parents were like, 
But right before school one day, my parents go, Will, we're going to give the dog away today. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm really sad about this and I am going to cry. But I also get it because I'm very tired of sneakily picking up shit so that my dad doesn't see that it's shit somewhere. We have like, we have a lot going on. I mean- we, our, our, we have a lot going on in our house. We got, you know, blended, two kids. blended family. We have two kids. Like I said, like her stepdad is like, he's going through a lot. He's, he's very sick. So we got, we have a lot of stressors in our life right now. We didn't need this. Like we didn't. Well, dude, at least you, <laughs> we didn't at need least you get the emotional weight of like seeing a dog at the end of its life. I don't know if there are like doggy retirement centers, like a ranch somewhere they can just go like, you know, frolic in, until Some, it's their time. But if there, if there were something that we would probably consider it. Something tells me that those ranches uh, don't let them frolic for very often. Something yeah. tells me there's a barn, and behind that barn, there's been a lot of uh, like, bullets. This dog, like, it deserves, you know, a nice home in which to live out its remaining days. And But <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's taken a lot out of us so far. We're it's not getting another dog a for a shit. while. I've, I've gone on record saying that I would rather have a second child at this point than a, and then a puppy. I think a second child is somehow easier. I think it's more exhausting, but I think it's easier from a management standpoint. Um, and I, I recently posed the question to Sally of, do you think we'll be a family that gets a new dog before Rosie passes? Or do you think we're just going to be a, an immediate replacement family? Because yeah. I'm not doing a big lapse. If I do a yeah. big lapse, I think I'm just going to be upset about Rosie for like 10 years, not do it. I think we're going to have to be a family that gets another dog before Rosie goes. Yeah, we were talking about getting um, another dog. We were, we were close to doing well, it dude, this year, actually. you got one. But like to like, Stella gets like, you know, separation anxiety. For her to have just a buddy to play with and sleep with and all that. So she finally gets this dog in her house and she's like, the fuck is this? Like, I can't do anything with this thing. Yeah. She's like, what the, I, I wanted a, a friend in here, but yeah. this isn't what I wanted. Like, we're close to getting diapers for this dog. Like, it's, it's, it's a situation. It's like Randy's like, yeah, I would love to have like a, a video intern, and then we give him like a sixty-five-year-old man who's like has to learn how to use his knows laptop. nothing about yeah. it, like technology. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he, he he brings in his old old He's VHS like, equipment, and Randy's like, thanks? "Are you fucking kidding me? This is not what I wanted." Fuck? Yeah. So <laughs> shout out, shout out, Ruger, uh, the, a sweet dog. Oh, he barks too. Like I forgot to mention that. A sweet dog, but man, he's he's a lot of trouble right now. That's okay. We'll get Ruger settled. We'll get him. We'll get him straightened out. Oh man. Uh, can we talk about some horny Japanese monkeys before we get into this weekend and fun? Uh, yeah, of course. So a Japanese zoo, they've got some gibbons. You familiar with gibbons? Uh, I can't picture what they look like, but yes, I've heard I of them. I think they're just tiny little guys. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're just like the For little, sure. The big eyes. The one, with, one with the big eyes. Gibbon. They got big eyes? They got big eyes, yeah. Big, I don't know. I'll big, go with you. Big monkey eyes. Well, a, a gibbon named Momo... He gave, uh, she gave birth in February 2021, which uh, surprised all the zookeepers at the Kuju Kushima Zoo right. Botanical Garden in Morikiara in Sasebo City in uh, the Nagasaki Prefecture. Well, yeah, I've been there. I actually did a much better job with that than I thought I would do. But they were confused because uh, she was living in her own enclosure with no other male monkeys around. Okay. What's going on in this enclosure? How does that happen? I think we need to take a look at this enclosure and try to figure out what's going on. Is is this a um, a Dallas Zoo situation? I don't know. The, I, I, I hesitate to compare any zoo to the Dallas Zoo because I think the Dallas Zoo's got a lot of questions. They need to get their shit together. They have way too many things going on. It's in the New York I opened the New York Times the other day when, when Randy and I were taping some SpawnCon, and one of the biggest stories in there is about the Dallas Zoo just not having their shit together. Not good. No. But anyway, uh, this says uh, she's very protective of her young, and so they've been trying to figure out what's going on. And so they've been gathering samples of the mother and child's uh, stool for a DNA analysis. Um, what they found out was that a, another gibbon named Itu, uh, who is 34 years old. I don't know how old gibbons are, but like... They get that old? That's an old-ass gibbon. Damn. Well, it's been identified as the father. And so these zookeepers are like, dude, how... Where what? is E two? Where is E two kept? Uh, in in a uh, enclosure very close to uh, Momo's. Shout out Momo. Okay. Do they do the walls touch? Uh, like the the cages? They they did they share a, a cage wall? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, so she backed her thing up to it. So what what has since been discovered is that she might have backed her thing up to that enclosure. <laughs> I mean, so they, they found a perforated board with holes 
And these holes in the board are around nine millimeters. Ooh, that's, you know that's, how big a millimeter is, that's right? That's not a good look for E2. We are absolutely exposing E2's crank right now, <laughs> and I, I feel bad doing it. So That's about 0.35 inches, so a third of an inch. This is a glory hole. Yeah, he essentially hit the glory hole. Well, as it turns out, um, this is where E2 was. This other one was kept where E2 was kept when not on display. And so they have managed to fit E2's junk through this third of an inch hole in order to impregnate Momo. If I'm E2, I'm like, nah, that ain't me. I, if, I couldn't fit through that thing. Dude, if that's I, how you know it's not me. Yeah, if I'm E2, I'm I'm in front of all the zookeepers and I'm like, please do not tell them what just happened. Please do not tell them I can fit through here. Oh my I god. I respect that these two are doing whatever they can in order to like, you know, get theirs, procreate, have a kid, make things happen. Hey, when you're horny, there's you'll find a way. <sighs> this is some high school shit. Like, fuck. Like that's a that's straight up a glory hole. What's hornier, this this guy fitting his his thing through a nine millimeter hole, or me having my mom buy Surfer Mag when I was little because reef ads had little tiny pictures of of reef girls wearing thongs in them. That's why you wanted it. That's why I had my mom buy me Surfer Mag when I was uh, about like ten years old. That's pretty horny. There are probably Dude, other ways to get pictures of hot women. I mean, it was either do that or go to Maxim Online, and I don't think our gateway computer could handle that. Oh yeah, not ideal. Okay. I would always wait for the, the Victoria's Secret catalog to come through the mail. When yeah. My mom got it. So was this like, was mostly on vacation when I saw the surfer mag in like a, in like a Hudson news. It just kept disappearing. I had to get, when I was horny on the road, that's when I was getting my surfer mags on. Victoria's Secret was so hot. Yeah. Like those magazines were lit. Yeah. Yeah. Love I mean, it. dude, at that age, it didn't matter if it was Victoria's Secret. It could have been people. It could have been anything. Just need to see a little flesh. Yeah, I don't care. It's like, yeah, tough. show me, show me one of the cast of Friends, and I'll be fine. Yeah. So yeah, I want to give a shout out to these two for managing to uh, be horny in a hopeless place. E two's down bad though. Th this has been made very public. Like everyone knows. You know what I mean? Everyone. So now this says a sturdy steel plate has now taken place of the board. So E two is no longer doing it. But it said, in order for E2, Momo, and their child to live together as a family, officials claimed that they are now preparing to try and introduce them officially. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? The first time uh, linking without a, a board between them. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's like Love is Blind. You know what I mean? Have you watched, did you watch Love is Blind? I watched one season of it. It was really bad, but also good because it was bad. I watched enough that I'm glad that I watched what I watched, but I don't think I have a, a, a much of a need to go further into there it. There was one guy on the season I watched that was the most cringy guy in like reality television history that it, it turned me off of the show because this one guy was so insufferable. I cannot stand him. I think as far as trashy television shows go, trashy reality television shows go, I think my second place right now to um, too hot to handle is yeah to to Love Island is too hot to handle. It's good. I, I really enjoy too hot to handle. Yeah. I really enjoy too that they clearly lube everybody up with like body oil before they do like their interviews and stuff. They have when they're when they're looking for cast scouting. Their only goal is like let's just find the hottest people we can. Yeah. And they're all from – what kind of blows my mind is they're all from different countries. Like they're all from all over the place. They're, they're worldwide. Yeah. I like that though. Yeah. I think it's time. Let's do it. This Weekend in Fun presented by our friends over at Roback. You can use code BACKER20 for anything. Anything on the site. We love Roback. You should love it too. I have been wearing their new shorts so often. Yeah. So often. There's something about the shorts thickness. It's like the thickness of like a really nice jogger. Yeah. And I like that for some reason. I don't really know why. I've been going real hard on their joggers lately. Which I, I, last time I checked, they were sold out. So I don't know if they want me talking about them. But their joggers are great. They have like the the thick no, ankle. They're, Dylan, I got good news for you. They're restocked? They just restocked good. them. They have the thick um, elastic ankle that I really like in a jogger. The other day, the other day, I had a tea time fall through, but I did what I do before every tea time, and that is I plan my outfit out, and I fold everything, and I put it on a chair in our living room so that when I wake up in the morning, I can just get dressed right away and do it. 
And when Sally looked down the other day and saw what I had there, she was like, are you just wearing literally all rowback on the course today? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I am. Rowback joggers, rowback uh, golf shirt, performance polo, rowback QZ with the wash branding on the shoulder. Damn, player. You know I'm out here. You know I'm out here. Backer 20 gets you 20% off at checkout. Backer 20, it's a one-time use code, so load the cart. Dylan, what are you getting into this weekend? I'll keep mine brief. Obviously, I had a big weekend last weekend with the ski trip. Um, not doing a whole lot, man. Just kind of laying low. I'm, I'm open to stepping out, but I have no plans to right now. I won't have parks Friday or Saturday. And then Sunday, of course, is Super Bowl Sunday. I don't have plans yet. Yeah. I'm not doing anything. I mean, it's tough when, uh, when my Super Bowl Sunday plans were to, uh, go to Michael Weiner's house. Yeah. And then, uh, I threw out a text about a week ago. He, he canceled that plan. I threw out a text. Asking if you guys wanted to do something here at the office, I think it'd be a fun little. Yeah, but no one said. I don't want to hang out here like after that. Well, here's the thing, Dylan. Here's the thing. The way that this Super Bowl is planned is not great for me. Five o'clock is not ideal. Yeah. Because you got the first half, and then it's bedtime for the little dude. I'm not missing bad gal Riri for literally anything. Everyone knows I ride for Rihanna. Yeah. Halftime. Halftime. Who's doing the national anthem? I don't know. Do you know Randy? He's country singer, Stapleton or something like that. Chris Stapleton? We got I'm, Stapes? I'm not sure about Don't quote me on that. We got I think he's a country dog? singer. Now I have to know. National Anthem Super Bowl 23. Chris Stapleton. Good job. Good job, Randy. I love Chris Stapleton. Do you think he's going to go over or under? Under. I think if anyone's going to go under, it's definitely a country singer. As opposed to a, but I think the line will reflect that. They know that he's not going to go crazy and just like hold a note for 20 seconds. Yeah. If you were singing the national anthem, would you go in with a plan? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be just so terrified. I'd check my, I'd, I'd hold the final note and check my watch and look at the screen, wink, and then <laughs> keep holding it. <laughs> yeah. I have no plans this weekend. Uh, uh, no, I don't want to say no plans. Uh, I'm going to be watching Love Island all weekend, like, obviously. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of that to, to knock out. Uh, after last weekend, not having internet all weekend, I am actually very, very, very excited to just watch soccer on my couch every morning all weekend. It's going to be great. Uh, but other than that, I don't really have much going on. Uh, I would love to get out and swing the sticks. I might go hit the driving range a little bit, work on my game, see what happens. But overall, nothing crazy. Uh, I am looking for some uh, some recipes. Or Super Bowl, because I think I'm just going to watch it in my crib. I would like to get some 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 Super Bowl esque food off. I got to make a plan for the Super Bowl, man. Do, have you purchased any of your hummus and your uh, crudite no. platter? I'm hoping that whoever's party I crash already has that prepared. Yeah, that do be facts. Randy, what are you doing for the Super Bowl? No clue. Absolutely not. Randy's got plans. He just doesn't want to know that. He's like afraid that like we're somehow going to show up there. We're not going to show up to your Super Bowl party, Randy. It's okay. Oh, then okay. Then I'm hosting this big party <laughs> that everyone's going to. Randy, what's your top? What's your top Super Bowl snack? Uh it's got to be buffalo chicken dip. I mean, it's it's a staple when it comes to. I think food. mine is just buffalo chicken wings. I think wings are my top Super Bowl snack. Did we do a draft on this previously? Wouldn't surprise me. If not, we probably should. Although it's too late. Yeah, it's we should. That, that's something we should have done about thirty-five minutes ago. Yeah, maybe. I think that's maybe where the first. I think it might have been the first draft we ever and, did, uh, and hummus came up. I thought you said the hummus and bell pepper thing. I thought you did that on touching base. It's been a while. I think that was a touching base. Thing. It's been a long while. I don't remember. There's a decent chance that uh, I have missed Kelly's Irish Pub. Uh, we, they've gotten more free publicity on this podcast than any other restaurant not named Matt's Hall Rancho. I have missed out on beers at Kelly's Irish Pub for what feels like four weeks in a row. I think it has to happen. I'm down. There was part of me that when washed in Instagram, which go follow the washed Instagram at Wash Media, uh, when it hit 20K, part of me was like, should we just go to Kelly's Irish Pub and just have like 20,000 beers right now? I'm down. I, I told you my Friday and Saturday are both open. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And that's it, I guess. That's it. Who you got in the Super Bowl? Uh, I'm going to ride with Kansas City. I don't know why I'm doing this. I have no clue. I have no attachment. You're going to say Philadelphia. I'm rolling with Philly on this one. I'm rolling with Philly. I kind of like I kind of like that Philly's just been like I mean all this stuff on Twitter about like trashy Philly fans 
It gets my blood going. I love it. It's a good team, man. It gets me excited. They're pretty good. And the it's way more fun to see the aftermath of a Philadelphia Super Bowl than it would be to see the aftermath of a Kansas City Super Bowl. Like the stories and, That's the, true. and the videos that come from Philadelphia winning are just going to be great. But my official prediction for the Super Bowl. Light city buses on fire and throw couches out of like exactly. 10, 10 story windows. Exactly. And I want Dan to be happy. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like and overall, my prediction for the Super Bowl is that uh, my TV will be on something else before the game ends. I don't okay. see myself finishing this Super Bowl. Okay. As far as teams go, this is the least invested I've been in a Super Bowl in a while. Like, I straight up don't care this year. Don't care. Yeah. It's been fun. That's been fun. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be doing uh, Love Island, boys. Bright and early. I'm not sure what time will be up, uh, but we'll probably start recording. If I had to guess, I'd say we'll start recording right before lunchtime, so it'll be hitting your yeah, airwaves. I, I have a lot to catch up on. You do. you got a lot to watch. I'm jealous of you, honestly. Okay. We've had some good stuff this season, Dylan. We've had some very good uh, stuff happening, and I think I think we're at a breaking point in the season where things are going to be going from cordial to crazy. Can't wait. All right. We'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. If you're not opto, go do that. But if not, no worries. We'll see you on Monday. Bye.